Respected dignitaries, honorable panelists of the day, and my dear colleagues, a pleasant morning to one and all gathered here. The whole world is witnessing revolutionary changes day by day. From an organizational perspective, revolutionary changes realigns and reshapes its strategic goals and often may lead to drastic changes in the behaviors, beliefs of the system. Our Ansar English School is also going through such changes and we must admit the fact that change is inevitable. Today we are going to stage a panel discussion as a part of the program by Ansar Empower and Inspire Touring. Today we are going to stage a panel discussion by the selected panelists from all sections of our school. Each pair of the panelists will discuss a particular topic to enhance with a vision to enhance the quality strategies and ambience of our school. And of course, uh, this particular, uh, before getting into the topic, I would like to ask you all a question. What is the greatest fear in this world? Or what is your fear in your mind? It depends, right? At this moment, I would like to remind you a few words of the former American President Roosevelt that the greatest fear in this world is fear itself or being fearful. It can be a fear towards a particular person, thing or a situation, whatever. But the problem is being fearful. So being the educators of this well-esteemed institution, we should be devoid of all those fears and challenges that we confront with. And let us take a step ahead to empower our, ourselves. So let this program be an inspiration to each one of you gathered here and let's empower ourselves. It's my pleasure and privilege to introduce the panelists of the discussion forum. Our first topic is how to improve communication in the campus or effective communication. And the first panelist is Mrs. Jasina from primary section. She is the teacher from the department of English and of course she is working here. She has been working here for seven years in our campus and her qualification is BA, Beard in English. And the second panelist is Mrs. Shija Piti from the Max department and she is from the secondary section and she has been working in this institution for 12 years and her qualification is BSc Beard in Max. And at present, she is a class coordinator of Standard 9. And our next topic is how to improve discipline. And the first panelist is Mrs. Fabna Harris from English Department. And she is working, she has been working here for four years in Ansar. And she has got five years of experience in teaching field. And her qualification is BA Beard in English. And our next panelist is Mrs. Srudi. And she is from Max department. She is from upper primary section. And uh, she has got four years of experience in ANSA. And our next topic is how to uh, enhance the academics, academic enhancement. And the first panelist is Mrs. Babita from English department. She is from the primary section. Her qualification is BA, BA, BA in English. And uh, she is a class coordinator of standard three. She has been working in this institution for 8 years. And the second panelist to introduce the topic academic enhancement is Mrs. Shafna Spinsaleh from Department of Max and she is from upper primary section. At present she is a class coordinator of class 6, standard 6 and uh, her qualification is BSc Beard in Mathematics. And she has got 8 years of experience in ANSA. And our next topic is how to improve professionalism. And the first panelist is Mrs. Sabira from the Department of Physics. Her qualification is BSc Beard in Physics. And she is from primary section. And she has got five years of experience in ANSA. And our next panelist is Ms. Revia from the senior secondary section. She is from the Department of English and at present she is selected as a head teacher of senior secondary section and she has been working in this institution since 2012. And our next topic is integration of values. How to integrate the values in our campus. And the first panelist to present the topic is Mrs. Smriti 
from Department of English. She is from primary section and her qualification is MADR in English. She also qualified K TET and she is a teacher from the Department of English. And the next topic is flipped the classroom, implementation of flipped the classroom. And our first panelist is Mrs. Amal from the Department of Social Science. And uh, her qualification is MA, BA in SS. And uh, she has been working in this institution for 12 years, 11 years in ANSA. And she has got 12 years of experience in the teaching field. And the last panelist is Mrs. Swadi from the Department of English. And she has got 17 years of experience in teaching field and has recently joined in ANSA. And her qualification is MA, BA in English. So these are the details about the panelists. And uh, the, excuse me, uh, one more panelist the, to introduce the topic integration of values, Mrs. Jisha from Department of Computer Science. And she has got 19 years of experience in ANSA. 16 years of experience in ANSA and 19 years of experience in the teaching field. And her qualification is MSc. Uh, in IT department, in IT and PGD, IT and PGDC. So these are the details about the panelists of our discussion forum. And now we can discuss the rules to be followed in the panel discussion. All the members of the teaching faculty are, to, are requested to be seated department wise. Anyway, six relevant topics will be discussed in this panel discussion. And uh, 12 panelists, panelists will be discussing. Each pair of the panelists will discuss a particular topic for 5 minutes. And uh, 4 queries after the presentation. After each topic presentation, a question answer session and sum up by the moderator will be followed. And uh, in case uh, of queries from the audience part, you can mail to samira.k.ansar.school.in, my email ID. And all members of the teaching faculty are requested to follow strict decorum during the panel discussion. No chitchats or loose talks. And we, we request you to keep your mobile phone silent. So these are the rules and regulations to be followed in the panel discussion. Now we are going to start the panel discussion. Our first topic is how to improve communication in the campus. And I would like to welcome Mrs. Jazina for the same. Ma'am. Here I am going to discuss some of the challenges our students are facing when they are acquiring the skill. The first one is lack of, lack of listening exposure. So it is the main uh, challenges our, student, uh, our students are facing. So we can see that the best communicators are always the best listeners. Each and every study conducted regarding the language acquisition skill, it has proved that 45% of the language acquisition or language competence we gain from listening, 30% from speaking, 15% from reading, and 10% from writing. So at this moment, we can introspect ourselves how much listening exposure we are giving to our children. According to the need and interest of the student, we can give them varieties of listening inputs. Our second challenge, second challenge is lack of enthusiasm. Lack of enthusiasm. This is the main challenge our students are facing. The students who are academically performed well, even the students who are academically performed well, are not willing to show an affinity or they are not showing an affinity to speak English. A conscious effort from the part of a teacher is needed. Only an enthusiastic leader can elevate the students to the next level. Our next topic is lack of skill to comprehend the content. This is also one of the major problems our students are facing. Many of our students are not able to comprehend the content or even the question papers also. So it is mainly because of the lack of reading. It is mainly because of the lack of reading habit. So our next topic, the next challenge is lack of English speaking atmosphere. This is also one of the major blockade of 
our students' communication skill. So it is the duty of each and every one in the campus to make to create an atmosphere, to create an ambience of speaking English. Wherever they go or whoever they met, they should uh, they should feel like this. If there is no other options, they will definitely move to the track. Our last challenge, or uh, we can move to the last challenge, that is peer group humiliation. This is also one of the uh, major challenge our students are facing. There is a tendency among our students that is the students who are willing to speak or the courage to speak are bullied, are bullied by others. So that shouldn't happen in our campus. This has happened because Many of our students are not knowing the necessity of speaking English in the campus. So, unless it becomes a necessity, it will never be practiced. So, we the teachers have the primary role to make it a necessity. I conclude my words. Next, I invite Shija ma'am to uh, discuss about the techniques that we, have, that we have to implement in our classrooms. Thank you. Once again, thank you all. presentation of Jazeera ma'am, we have seen the challenges that we come across in our campus. Now I would like to welcome Mrs. Shija to present her talk. Good morning all. Already Jazeera ma'am has said about the challenges that we are facing in our school. Not only in school, everywhere we are facing some problems because of this communication. So we have to improve the communication. As she said, communication skill is the most important skill that we all should acquire in this 21st century. So any person, anyone all can improve this communication skill by practice. So language, about language, language is not a factor but language do play a role on communication. Then here I would like to uh, say some strategies uh, for improving the communication skill of our children. So first one is create a comfortable atmosphere to open. So always we have to make an atmosphere to speak up. Always. Uh, so that means they should have freedom to speak. So if the communication is two way then only it will be success. Compulsory task. So always uh, smart children. That means those who are good in communication and smart, they only, only will be coming forward. So we have to give equal chance for all. So we have to, to break this tension, we have to give conversely tasks. How can we give conversely tasks for that at least daily we can give to provide two or three minutes for each, uh, one child of each class for speaking their personal or uh, general experiences. By this, if they are speaking in front of their students, it will improve their confidence their level and they will be comfort also if they are speaking in front of their children, their students. Next, we can implement the language lab. Through this language lab, all the students, they are able to watch and listen famous personalities, that means com uh, good communicators, uh, speeches and uh, uh, videos for, uh, through this lab uh, with the help of uh, headphone. Then uh, it will be uh, improving their listening and postures, gestures are all. Speaking club. This, through this speaking club, we can conduct many programs like debates, uh, this group discussions, and uh, um, extemporary like that. Reading. Reading makes a man perfect. We have a very good library, big library. So maximum the chance to use the library by giving free time. Free time we have we can send them to the library, or else uh, we can make a uh, we can uh, arrange a really cart also. If students are not moving to library, this cart will be coming to their classes, and free period they can utilize this and uh, encourage them to read daily newspapers and good uh, magazines also. School radio. 
here. Uh, we have to, if we are, we are implementing a school radio and connect all the sessions through a uh, speaker, then uh, important announcers and uh, special programs all they can do through this uh, school radio and uh, selection of RJ cannot be uh, limited. So I am concluding my presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Shijamis. Before that, before winding up, let me ask you a question, Shijamis. Here comes a question for you. Being a maths teacher, do you think that language has got an important role in the classroom? Yes, definitely. Of course, in understanding the concepts, comprehending the question papers, I mean questions in the question papers, do you find that uh, uh, the students have some difficulty yes, level in that? Always students are facing the problem. So how will you give a direct experience for them? How will you practice them? Can you just yes. explain to others? Okay, always if they are able to do the problem also, they will be knowing the method, but they are not able to understand the meaning of the question, what we have to solve. So for that communication, this language process is very important. So by giving lot of questions, we have to create such uh, situations, many questions, sorry, many questions, uh, we can almost uh, improve, um, solve this problem. Do you give the exercises as a home assignments to practice more so that they can comprehend the topics more? I think that is also preferable. We have to make them comprehend the topics and we can give them as home assignments to read and understand because the major difficulty level among the students is comprehending the idea from the questions, isn't it? So it reflects in all languages, it reflects in all subjects. So I think we should train them how to read the question, comprehend the topic, comprehend the concepts and understand the difficulty level and just work accordingly. So we have to practice, we must practice. Thank you, Shijanas. Thank you for your presentation. Thank you. And uh, I would like to ask a question to Jasina, Ms. Dad. Jasina, Ms. Please. Would you like to follow a direct method or a bilingual method in a classroom where there are a lot of slow learners? Of course, I Of course, you might have come across such uh, experiences, isn't it? Yes. So, in such a, a classroom, uh, which method would you like to follow? Of course, I will definitely follow. I will definitely follow the direct methods. Through this, as a teacher, I can give, give our, my students a listening exposure. As a, uh, according to their age level and standards, I can give them uh, simple words, uh, simple phrases. So through that, the direct methods, I will follow the uh, direct methods. Will you be able to convince your parents if there are any complaints from their side that uh, when you follow a direct method, will you be able to convince them? Yes, I will try to uh, convince them. Okay, fine. Thank you, thank you, Jesse Namas. Thank you. Thank you, panelists, for the presentation of the topic, uh, how to improve communication. And our next topic is how to improve discipline. For that, I would like to um, call upon uh, Mrs. Fatna for the presentation. Thank you, Sir Damas. Ladies and gentlemen, and pleasant morning. Let me start my session very informally. Before I get into my presentation, let me ask a question. How do we, how do we rate our school? Is it important the infrastructure of our school or a building? Or is it a good package of principal, vice principal and a team of five teachers? Or is it the academic performance of our students every year? Everything matters, isn't it? Yes. What about discipline? It is equally important. If it is important, what is the first step? We have to bring up the change. Let me highlight a quote here. Everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing himself. Yes, the changes should be within. We, as the teachers, we should change first. Don't you think so? Yes. See, we know who we are or where we stand now. And we have to reach to a position to reach the goal. That is, who you want to be. So there is a gap we have to fill up. That is, changes. We have to bring the changes within. As the teachers, I think the 
most difficult task for a teacher is the class management because most of the time when they come to school they spend in the classroom so class management is very important let me go through some points bond and rapport instructions creative presentation value oriented and motivation let us go through one by one bond and rapport see if the teacher and student if there is no relation or if there is no chemistry working out nothing will work well isn't it yes so a healthy and friendly relation good and frequent communication special greetings it is always said a good beginning is half done so let us greet the students in a different manner caregiver a teacher must be an open eye and an open ear see always we expect that as a teacher we expect what we say they have to listen no always we have to give our ear and eyes to them too what they want to say what they want to show yes yes i think these are the words that we are familiar with as a teacher quiet pin drop silence is this a market and even if the teacher gets more irritated she even say leave the classroom yes no yes so i think if we have the a good uh, control over the class we should not have to use all these things it's true see as i already mentioned in the last slide we should not need to go for saying all this quiet silence if our class presentation is up to the level it's catchy it's attractive then everything will go smooth it's be creative and imaginative in our daily lesson plans we should be prepared create opportunities for reflection real world interactions update with the changing world our students have far reach as a teachers we too should value oriented i'm not going to stress on this topic since we have already a team to present this one but still i just want to focus we should feel our make feel our students that we value them we have a priority we give a priority for them yes motivation see we have a practice of giving awards and rewards for different competitions uh, that is connected with the uh, cc and all other but why can't we go for a uh, rewards for discipline too let us uh, conduct some programs or just evaluate them best discipline class communication neatness everything we can go for some motivation some rewards too there is a question on the screen is uniformity a beauty if you agree these are a big challenge for our school dress code of what they are part of bell timing organized assembly scheduled programs and activities if these are well organized in a very good manner of course half way done monitoring in charge we already have a practice of uh, representing our leaders for class school head school uh, uh, head girl head boy etc but let us go for some change every class teacher's duty is to find a representative that is a call class monitor then also section wise with the help of the section of junior principal we have to find the head girl and head boy for the section 2 same way we have to have a section head girl and head, sorry school head girl and head boy and also we all have a practice of, of the other leaders to like prefects and all but they should have a link each other that is assigning duties class monitors their duty is to find the uh, discipline of their own class if anything issues that should be reported by the section monitors and it is school monitors they should collect e from each section a collaborative way they should conduct this method every month and all the reports can be collected by the junior principal and class teacher Ele election must be there in a very uniform the whole school should participate in that rules and regulations right balance of rules and regulations 
early exit of students and parents waiting area. Teach the procedures well by separating notice through monitors. This will be uh, explained by uh, my partner too. Workshop for students. Yes. In order to bring our discipline atmosphere in the campus, we can go for a workshop too. Conducting a workshop for students, one or two days we can spare completely for that. On the topic discipline, let the students make different charts and posters. Let them paste it in the different areas like classroom, staff room, washroom and washroom area, drinking water, playground. What are the necessary rules and regulations they have to write? They have to stick in different places. Let them wash that every day. Let them learn every day. If these are the disciplinary issues in the smaller classes, obviously when it comes to higher classes, it's entirely different. They are grown up now, so they will have, of course, an adjustment with the school discipline. The only way to, for, uh, for, to deal them is in a psychological approach. Involvement of students, opportunities within the school. We have to give enough celebration inside our campus, otherwise, of course, they will burn. And the counselor and counseling session. Of course, every teacher should be a counselor. But we have a post as a counsellor here, so if necessary, the teacher can refer for a counsellor. And we can conduct a counselling sessions in between too. Discuss responsibility too with the students. So that's on my topic. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Okay, Fabianis, here is a question for you. Teacher's role is inevitable, we agree. But still we can see some disciplinary issues uh, among the children even though we ensure that particular behavior from us. So what can you give some solution for that? Pardon me ma'am. Uh, teacher's role is inevitable. You have already seen uh, presented that a teacher's role. It is inevitable that teacher should be a counselor, teacher should support them, yes, teacher should it. help them to coordinate the activities. More than that still we can see some uh, disciplinary issues among the students. So yes. how can we solve it? Yes. Uh, I think if that issue is for a specific uh, group of students or a specific child continuously or repeatedly coming, I think there we have to go for a case study. Something will be there behind that students. It's better go for a clinical or a case study. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Me. Thank you for Namas. Hi everyone. How is it going? Thank you. Hope you have enjoyed this session. Is it? Okay. So, self-discipline. We know it is a skill. Right? It is a skill. We acquire other skills. Okay. So, just ask you one question or just think about it. Are our children disciplined? Yes or no? Yes. Some are disciplined but few are not. Isn't it? Yes. So who is responsible? Yes. We are responsible. We teachers are responsible. We have the responsibility to improve their self-discipline. Right? Okay. So uh, uh, when uh, uh, reopening the uh, school, we are facing different situations. Uh, uh, it, it will be a stressful situation. Uh, we are confusing uh, how we can we, we have to take a good decision. Uh, it, it is apt for the child or any other colleagues. Uh, so such situation we can apply this method, star method. Okay, then definitely you will get, you can take a good decision how to move. Okay, so first take a, give a smile, smile. Come on, smile. Take a deep breath and relax. Definitely it will give you positive attitude. You can take good decision. Okay, just try it and share this method to our children too. Okay, so. See, being disciplined is not an easy phenomenon. Huh? Uh, there are some techniques to improve. Huh? We should need practices and patience. So here I am sharing three steps to improve our self-discipline. First one, know our school discipline system. Second one, you, we should follow 
the corrective measures to correct the child. Third one, maintain. Maintain the discipline. How to maintain the discipline from June to March or complete year or the whole school. Okay, so first one, no school discipline system. See, each member of uh, our school family uh, should aware of what are the school, uh, school rules and regulations. Uh, it, is, uh, it is well explained in our school diary. Okay, so we teachers uh, will be able to convey this, uh, what are the rules and regulations of our school to the parents and students. For that, we can conduct, we can arrange a parents teacher conference before opening the school. Uh, then the, uh, the teacher should be able to convey these other rules. You should, you, you should follow this kind of rules and regulations to the coming, uh, coming days. Okay, the first important thing, everyone should know the school rules and we have to make sure that they are well known about the school rules. And we should keep a data. Uh, we, should, we should be recorded uh, data about each student, whether they are wearing the uniform properly, punctuality, communication and they follow school rules or not. Everything we should be recorded. If you feel, uh, if you see some uh, one, uh, one child misbehave, uh, what we what we are not going to ask children child don't do uh, it's okay now but don't do like that this, uh, advices are given but you have to correct it for correction we have to follow we have to follow this nine step how to correct a child from the uh, indisciplinary uh, situation uh, behaviors shown first record and observe Recording the observations and verbal one. For record observations, we should use the anecdotal records. Okay, we should follow the anecdotal record for each child. Second, written warning and parents acknowledgement. Third, counseling, meeting with the parents, special behavior training, in school suspension, out of school suspension, and community service training. Last, Again, these all steps we have done, uh, no change in the child, then our principal should take an action. They will inform, this is not a school for you. You uh, go for challenge other school, change of school. So children, this is the important thing. We have to follow these nine steps. Then, last, how to maintain our discipline. This is the important thing, how to maintain the school discipline. How to maintain. Uh, as my partner Sobna was saying, rewards. We should give reward, rewards. When one, one, ch one child is performing well in the discipline, man, uh, details, we should give rewards. But never ever punish a child. This everyone should keep in our mind. We, we also, we will never punish a child. Punishment is a crime. We should be bothered about that. Okay? Punishment is a crime. We should, if any parent is, or child is moving towards a case, we should, uh, we should face legal formalities. So it is a crime. By keeping these all things in our mind, what is the benefit of school discipline? What is the benefit of school discipline? Yes, yes, we can fulfill our vision. We can produce and uh, nurture the students to the time as creative and value driven citizen in a diverse and rapidly changing world. We can fulfill our vision. Thank you. Thank you, Sruti Miss, for such a brilliant presentation. Uh, I would like to forward a question that uh, among, among the teenagers, we find a lot of indisciplinary issues, right? So can you give me some tips for that? You have already introduced, but still, among the teenagers, so many indisciplinary issues have been noted nowadays, right? So, can you give some special tips for that? Yes, Savita, ma'am. Uh, it's a wonderful question. It's actually uh, in all our minds came this question, no? See, uh, prevention is better than cure. Okay. See, um, and, uh, forming an indisciplinary committee after the indisciplinary situation cannot uh, and cannot be encouraged always. Huh? For example, uh, seniors, juniors conflict. Huh? We should give, uh, we should make them a feel, feel, feel that seniors are the person to take 
pair of junior hmm? then the same way uh, we should provide the junior what juniors are the person to be taken care by the seniors huh? such kind of activities we should provide then we can deal this kind of situation okay so thank you thank you, thank you so much of course we should ensure a rapport among the students from all sections of our school that is a great challenge in our school because we are not able to form the uh, activities together from the standard to 12th standard of course that unity of course even though the unity is developed or established but still activities we are not able to form because of the uh, of course it's a boon and a bane for us because of our strength but still we have to go on or a plan for such activities to ensure the rapport among the children from all sections and of course one more point i would like to add is that uh, 4000 plus students are there in our campus and the parents are providing uh, i mean uh, taking admission in the school um, ensuring that the, the, they have a trust on these staff of anzar in this school so we should work as a team and we should ensure the safety and security of our students in the campus for that all the sections including all the uh, uh, persons in charge for example housekeeping uh, cleaning section mess staff everyone should be alert to ensure the safety of our students we already know that uh, the students will go for a, a places for the hiding places where the cameras are not installed and maybe there may be some uh, indisciplinary issues of course we have to take care of that because as i told earlier uh, we they have a trust on us and of course we have to ensure the safety of our students for that we should work for that and training sessions should be conducted for uh, for giving the ideas that all the staff should respond i repeat they should respond to any indisciplinary issues not reacting they should respond as our principal told yesterday if there are any indisciplinary issues we should be able to respond so for that training sessions should be conducted for all the sections in our campus as i told so of course that will ensure uh, uh, safety and security for our students so thank you panelists thank you parnamis and sudhimis for the presentation now our next topic is academic enhancement for that i would like to welcome mrs bagita an ecstatic morning to all who are present over here i would like to start my presentation with a famous quote by leonardo da vinci learning is the only thing that our mind never regrets never fears and never exhausts and very much elated to present my topic academic enhancement let's start with a question what is the purpose of academic improvement can you say what is the purpose of academic improvement the purpose of academic enhancement definitely is to achieve an educational goal that is learning no doubt in that how can we improve our academics that is a question in front of us today i am going to share a learning strategy experiential learning to improve our academics two days before we had, we had attended an innovative session by our vice principal shaini ma'am on the topic experiential learning let's take a recap what is experiential learning experiential learning is a learning is the process of learn by doing in this experiential learning the teacher is not purely an instructor she acts as a facilitator it is her duty to find the potential to uncover the potential of the students actually the teacher links with the lesson with the daily life activities and experiences then the teaching learning will be more fruitful than any other methods in this process teacher helps the students to face real life problems and help the students to find to solve the problem under her guidance i am going to introduce some of the method how can we implement experiential learning in our classroom first one is role play it 
is a very interesting and joyful activity we can do it in the classroom we can put the students into the imaginative world they can be the favorite character characters for example favorite animals favorite planets it definitely helps to reflect the knowledge it enhances the creativity and imagination and one of the most important benefit is that provide we can provide chances for all the students next one is field trips it helps students to see to feel whatever they are learning about it really ex explore the students they can explore something outside from the school next an important part of experiential learning that is art integrated learning it will not provide skill and skills of art we use art as a tool of teaching it is a medium of learning it can be visual arts like painting drawing clay modeling and also performing arts like dance music etc let's see some of the activities we can do first one is integration of drama for example if we want to do the classification of animals we can do it through a drama we can uh, uh, if 30 students are in our class we can uh, call two students as scientists and ask them another students enact as different animals according to their movement they can divide this is integration of drama the next one is jewelry making it is main it is helpful for chemistry for teaching methods next one is poster making we can give the students for opportunity for making posters of various national and international days and this is an example of art integrated learning storyboard through drawings we did last year next i'm going to introduce one more learning strategy that is gamification gamification is just the application of game elements and principle into non game context for example we can use the elements such as points or scores badges coins trophies we can use to teach our subjects what is the purpose of gamification the purpose of gamification is mainly it is for an engagement and to create an interest in students then why specifically we do gamification in our classroom why specifically why should we adapt gamification among our students because that is one main reason is that all students like to play games if they are not coming to our track it's our responsibility to go into their own track and impart knowledge these are the methods i am going to show thank you babita mr thank you for the presentation would you like to explain the difference between gamification and game based learning okay ma'am game all of it all we know it has no definite rules we can play at any time but game based learning when we are playing the game or when we are doing the play the students are learning the concept but gamification we use different game elements to teach learn teach for learning in a non game environment right yes. using the game elements game no. elements in a non game environment okay thank you thank you babita ma'am so that was the presentation now next i would like to call mrs shafnas for her presentation good morning everyone my topic is academic enhancement before starting the presentation i would like to remind all you about the admission procedure of our school in ansar the admission is very flexible we welcome all categories of students without considering the parents family status or education no interviewing parents happens here that's why the ansar step stays one step ahead it is very positive aspect we all know but it 
was very challenging for me teachers because in front of us we are getting a wide categories of students with different learning habits we should identify each and every child how can we learn their difference the best option and the first thing is communication Communicate to discover each and every child. Ask questions to them. Listen to them. So through communication, we can identify our child. Usually, we teachers always uh, uh, go for meeting when there is an obvious behavior or any academic problem. But this year, let us do one thing. Let us formulate an organized plan for the meeting. Every day, we will meet two or three child children. and uh, we will give them fix a time and venue and all so that by the end of the month we will be able to cover all our students we will be able to meet all them in the meeting we will set their expectation very high we will ensure all our support and we will uh, ensure the confidentiality to make them comfortable see most important thing all this uh, we things the every step should be recorded the progress should be recorded it will be helpful us in our, uh, in the coming year days as i told we will be getting different types of students we have to categorize based on their ability in a classroom we should know each child and we should um, categorize them according to their ability no need to announce the it in public but uh, according to this category we will target we will set a target for each group for example uh, 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 30% of my class students will get 30 or uh, 90 percentage above mark according to this target we can plan our learning strategy there will be students a group of students who can score up to 75% of mark so our target for that student should be like that and we should plan and the learning strategies according to that suppose in an exam a child scores 2 mark and after all this setting target and goal that child could um, score at least 3 mark that one mark should be appreciated different types of students and we can't forget about the students with disabilities so the first thing the parents and teachers should be trained to diagnose the disability different types of disabilities are there and the parents and teachers should be aware of that then only we can design inclusive learning strategies and inclusive examinations if needed we can go for a special educator for this type of students there are several concessions from cbse also we have to utilize all that uh, concessions and privileges we can go for extra time timing extra method even the pattern and the length or everything of the exam could be changed according to the disability of the child and the parents teachers should be aware of the privileges given by the cbs see our child children need to be motivated we need to motivate them first step we should encourage them for self study for that we should avoid ready made notes yes but it is not possible to stop the ready made notes within one day for that let us plan like this year for every subject one topic will be given for them to self study from each chapter each chapter one topic for them for self study we will correct them if if uh, needed and we should encourage creativity we should give all the opportunities for them uh, for the self study and we should be appreciated if mistakes are there we can criticize but in person the, this will help our students in setting goals our students should be motivated to set goals in from smaller classes itself the career counseling and pre vocational uh, exposure should be started from the middle school itself and the subject teachers can also integrate different career guidance with their subject for example when we are uh, teaching uh, the solar system let's talk about astronomy when we are teaching uh, algorithm in maths 
let's talk about the uh, spreadsheet of the software and all, which is widely used nowadays. Yes, this is very important. The involvement of parents. We all have heard the triangle between the parents, teachers and students. But we always miss the parent part. So we should encourage the parents part. Why? Because the, pa the parent, the involvement of the parents, the students with the parents' involvement are getting better grades and they are showing higher aspirations. They are showing positive attitudes to school and all. So for that, we need to uh, assure the uh, parents' involvement. Why we need uh, that be understood? Now, how can we uh, involve the parents? In the beginning, in the first open day itself, we should train the parents the importance of the parent involvement. We have to set expectations from them. And uh, very important, each and every subject teacher should update daily the parents about what is happening in each uh, in classroom after each period. This could be done through WhatsApp or email. But the parents should be aware what is ha what happened in the day in the school. We should uh, timely remind them and all. Now the very important thing for academic uh, enhancement is examination. Don't you feel nowadays the students have lost the importance of the examination? They uh, have lost the real purpose of examination. But what is the reason for that? Maybe nowadays we have too much of examinations or maybe the paper pen tests are more. See, we always uh, talk about experiential learning, creativity in the classroom and all. But when it comes about the examination, we always stay back. So for exams also, why can't we approach in the other way method? Instead of uh, for, your, uh, for one examination, for example, unit is one. For English, let us test the skill of listening. For unit is two, let us test their listening, uh, the reading uh, skill. Like that, let us restructure the current examination pattern. And uh, in the number of examinations are now, now we have more number of examinations. So uh, we can uh, restructure in such a way. After every examination, our children should be able to uh, understand the work, the areas he is at best, work, the areas he or she is improving, the areas he or she needs to focus more. Don't wait for open days. Let us do just after each examination. The feedback should be given as soon as possible. Excuse me, Chaknarvis. Could you please speed up? By the famous call, this cost of uh, thought of uh, Albert Einstein, everyone is genius. If you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. By this call, I conclude my discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Shakti. Uh, could you explain that a lack of interest and enthusiasm among the students is a ma major challenge among the teachers? Could you explain uh, how can we? Uh, overcome. See, see uh, th th it may be because they don't have any goals. So if we are possible to set goals from the primary class itself, they will show uh, interest in their studies. I feel like that. Okay, thank you, thank you. I think the students should have should have a goal oriented education. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, Babidamis and Shapnasmis. Now you have all gone through from their presentations the different strategies that we would like to adopt in the teaching learning process. So do you have, I think uh, so many of you may be wondering that uh, uh, whether we'll be able to balance a huge syllabus before us and at the same time to create enthusiasm and interest among our uh, students. I would like to forward this question to Madam and you. Shall I forward this to Jofim as a senior teacher from SS department? A huge syllabus is just before us. And at the same time, a new new teaching learning process and strategies also now the, our panelists have presented. Do you think that it will balance in our classes? Just your concept about it. How are you going to manage in this new academic year? Uh, yes, 
so many programs are going on in our school and uh, it is, uh, our uh, syllabus is also very tough to complete. And so that is a great uh, challenge in front of us. And uh, but uh, through our uh, that uh, group discussion, collaborative uh, learning, uh, we can overcome. Definitely, we can overcome no problem. Uh, from our experience, we can share uh, that techniques to other teachers too. We have to plan it, right? Uh, we should plan. have a systematic planning. I think okay. we'll be able to overcome, overcome that the challenge. challenges. Okay, thank you, Jokanas. Thank you so much. Anyone else would like to contribute regarding that statement that uh, we have gone through so many teaching experiential learning yesterday. We have discussed, uh, we got a presentation from our VP, and today the panel is also introduced to so many topics. Anyone would like to, uh, for example, I would like to forward a question to uh, our VP that uh, uh, you are a chemistry teacher. I think the chemistry is one of the toughest subjects that uh, among the teenagers, I think. So, how will you manage uh, to create uh, interest and enthusiasm among the children if you are dealing a chemistry class? Would you give some tips for our chemistry teachers? Yes, uh, so Savita Miss. Chemistry is a science of colors, science of experiments. If you take the students to the lab and give them opportunity to experiment with the chemicals which are not harmful for them, and that even the harmful chemicals under our guidance we can do it. That will create interest among students and when they find out things by themselves, that concept is concrete, it is imprinted in their brain and that gives them chances to do experiments in their lives also makes chemistry interesting. Teaching chemistry in the class using chalk and board makes it a difficult subject for them. And through a single class you can teach many concept. You can make them learn many concepts if you are taking them to lab and experiments. Okay, thank you Shailamas. Of course, we all, the teachers have a general attitude that all the, we are the ultimate authorities to impart all the concepts in our textbook and even that through our lecture method. I think that it's time, high time to change our attitude. Our teaching methodologies and strategies should be restructured. Anyway, thank you panelists for a wonderful presentation. Now I would like to uh, call upon uh, Mrs. Sabira for the presentation of the topic, How to Improve Professionalism. Good morning everyone. In this pleasant morning, we are uh, all are gathered here to a new beginning. And my topic for presentation is How to Improve Professionalism. Respect that is give respect and take respect. Being 
teachers, parents, our surroundings and their fellow students also the environment. Though most of our students are punctual, there are, there are still rooms for improvement. So we should create awareness uh, for the students to be punctual. That is uh, reaching the class on time and also submitting or uh, completing their assignments on time, etc. That is a track how long, how long tasks take. That is always rectify when and where required. Now uh, let's go through next skill and development, next qualities that features are communication skill, leadership quality, teamwork, writing, listening and reading skills. Having positive listening skill helps to develop other good character traits. That is making it a useful first lesson. A good leader can change the world. So we teachers should uh, give opportunity and uh, also we have to give the develop, to develop the students to be uh, as good leaders. We should give opportunity to be leaders for the students. Then uh, when we are taking communication that is English speaking atmosphere should be created in our campus. And we can give some, uh, we can paste some posters or displays in our surround, in our campus to, uh, to motivate the students to communicate in English. Next, we are going to attire and style. That is, uh, make sure students are in proper uniform, grooming that is well groomed and also maintain self cleanliness. Attire and style give a much professional Appearance. That is wearing proper uniform and also when grooming will boost their confidence. And also it will increase their mental and personal uh, physical or improve mental and physical uh, performance. Next we are passing to the social awareness and uh, the points are following cues at required places. Procedures and behaviors at offices, awareness about waste disposal. Have you observed our students standing in front of our school store? Are they maintaining the queue or are they crowded? So apart from the curricular activities, we should we should taught them uh, some public behavior. How to behave in public? It is very essential thing though, we should teach them how to behave in public, that is how to maintain cues and also how to behave in a public transport and also public places and where to dispose the waste etc. Professionalism helps them see their classroom experience as preparation for the real world. That is, professionalism is much more important in this current era because it is becoming more and more important as, is, as our world, that is, today's market become more and more competitive. So, to, with, to withstand this competitiveness, we should train our students to stand out from the crowd. Motivated students, that is motivation is the best method and motivated students tend to learn uh, more. Teach them to try harder and always improve. Work through mistakes and failures. Get the work done. If we go through our vision, that is nurture the students to thrive as creative and value driven citizen in a diverse and rapidly changing world. I am sure that we can mould our students to a shining star. And thank you. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Thank you. Thank you, Sabaranas. Shall I ask you a question that uh, how can a disruptive student be transformed into highly professional? Okay. Uh, first, yeah. uh, first, we have to know the child. What is the mind? What is the level of the child? And also we should find out what is the difficulty uh, for the child. And we have to find solution and always love and care that child. And I am sure that uh, he will uh, be, be the good one. Of course. Thank you, Sabinamis. Of course, teachers have a great role in making.
making them professional and of course we too have to be professional. And to add more points, I would like to welcome Ms. Revia for the same. Thank you, Moderator Sal Thomas, and thank you, my co-panelists, Mrs. Sadhara Ismail, and very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, see, my partner, Mrs. Sadhara Ismail, has already explained what professionalism is. And I think all the teachers who are sitting before me are highly uh, qualified and experienced and who are professional too. So I don't have to teach anything new. Still, there is, as Sadhara has said, there is always room for improvement. So, to make my explanation and your comprehension better, I have made uh, four uh, categories. I have categorized four areas of our mutual improvement. Let's see what they are. See, you have to always ask a question to yourself, how professional you are. And if you are still confused without a specific answer, just check on these four areas. The first one is your personal characteristics. Second one, your subject knowledge, subject knowledge and your teaching method. And the third one is your communication skill and the last one is your attire and style. The first one, your personal characteristics. See, in order to be a good teacher, first of all, you have to be a good individual. And see, talk to people with a very pleasant face. Always have a pleasant face. Always have a receiving mentality. Always have a welcoming mentality. You are not superior to anyone. We all are equal. So maintain that, uh, you know, like uh, that, that thought in your mind whenever you deal with people. Next one, take part in non-academic activities too. See, there are some teachers who come to the school only for teaching. They come on working days only. Whenever there is a program in the school, they take leave thinking that it is not their job to attend the same. It is not like that. If you have that thought in your mind, kindly change it. All the activities, all the academic and non-academic activities are conducted for us also. Do take part. Next one is be responsible for your mistakes. There is no harm in saying sorry or uh, saying thank you or saying please. Next one, discuss your innovative ideas with other teachers too. Don't be so stingy that you, you have lot of ideas and you will do, you will implement all these ideas in your class but you won't share with others. Please don't be stingy, don't be a miser of ideas. If you, if you, you know, think and find out something creative, something innovative, you know, Take some time to discuss with your colleagues and always have a plan B. We all are human beings, you know, definitely things won't work according to our plan sometimes. Okay, so ha ha always have a plan B. If plan A does not work, don't worry, don't panic, go with your plan B. Next one is your subject knowledge and your teaching style. Again, let me remind you, we all are uh, highly experienced and qualified teachers. Anyway, see as uh, our moderator, uh, you know, uh, mentioned in her introductory lines, this world is witnessing revolutionary changes every day. That means the subject you are, you have specialized in is expanding day by day. Every day something new is happening. So don't lag behind, keep yourself updated and you have an idea for that you can subscribe to any subject experts youtube channel watch at least one video a day or at least read a page daily we know that like i know that we all are running a very hectic schedule so in the middle of all your activities you know spend at least some time to read a page a day next one Prepare your lesson plan in advance after listening to the suggestions of your HOD. Anyway, our principal has assigned all the HODs to watch, observe the classes and give constructive uh, suggestions, right? So, you have your suggestions from HOD. Kindly include all the suggestions and make your next lesson plan a better one. Next one, collect feedback from students. See, you are teaching, you are dealing with the living human beings, not machines. Definitely they have opinion. Okay, so ask them, did they like your class? Did they like your presentation? Get the feedback and have a positive approach to the negative feedback too. If the students, uh, you know, put forward some kind of 
of negative feedback, correct it for the next class. Next one is, you know, our CBC has abundance of handbooks on each and every topic. Log into their site and kindly download the handbooks and take time to read them thoroughly. The last one in this slide is attending training sessions by CBC. Training sessions can be the online sessions too. Make it a point that you don't miss out any training provided by CBC. The next one is communication skill. Communication skill as it is un Ansar English school, definitely the language of your communication must be English. And I know we all are not fluent in English. There is always a chance to improve. So watch the English movies or English web series. At least talk to the uh, teachers of English department. Not necessarily teachers of English department. We have teachers who are very fluent in English from other departments too. Talk to them at least 10 minutes a day. Let there be mistakes. Definitely we all make mistakes. Let there be mistakes. Don't worry. If the teacher gives you the correction, kindly add that correction next time when you speak. Then next one, appreciate in public and criticize in private. Use your, you know, staff room is all, all, you know, like among the students, staff room is not to be the cook house of all the gossips. Please don't do that. Uh, you know, let there be only positive vibe inside the staff room. Uh, talk about the students qualities only inside the staff room. If you find something, something to be criticized, call that student personally, talk to them in a very polite and friendly manner. Next one, keep your work aside when somebody comes to talk to you. I told you in the beginning, always have a welcoming attitude. Somebody is coming to talk to you and you are, you know, so busy doing so many things, please don't. Definitely you people will be busy. Anyway, keep that work aside, put your pen down, uh, you know, ask that person to sit down, ask that person to relax and lend your ears. Next one, don't listen to others' opinion, especially to the newcomers. Don't ask about uh, one particular teacher to another teacher, okay? You talk to that person directly. You talk to that person and form your own opinion about that person. Then the last one, choose your words correctly. You know, once it is gone from your mouth, you can't take it back. So choose your words correctly, rightly. Then the last one, the last area of improvement is definitely attire and style, okay? Always wear neat and ironed clothes. I know it is not easy to maintain in this, uh, you know, climate, in this rainy climate. Still try your best. Groom your hair and nail. As I told you already, you all know it. I don't have to teach anything new. Still, take this as a reminder only. Groom your hair, groom your nail. You know, those who come by uh, private bus and all your uh, you know, hair will be messy by the time you reach the staff room. Take some time to redo your hair. Next one, sit and walk elegantly. Um, I can't demonstrate how to walk elegantly here anyway. You know, we have people, the man on the screen is the best example for that. Sit, talk and walk elegantly. Then wear formal clothes. You know how to... Uh, wear, how to, uh, you know, choose your attire for a function and how to choose your attire to come to the school. The other one is more glittery, more gaudy and uh, for school you have to choose light colors and formal ways. Definitely I know uh, dressing, makeup, all those things are very personal. Still, you know, to make ourselves, to be professional, choose formal wears. And with minimal jewellery. Obviously, we don't wear uh, all the glittery uh, golden pins to the school. Still, matching ornaments with a slight makeup. And above all these things, confidence and your positive smile are the best makeup you can always wear. Thank you. Thank you, Yogyakarta, for such a pleasing presentation. Two questions are waiting for you. The first question is from Rega, ma'am. You already said that the teacher's attire, I mean the dressing style is important to be professional. So do we have to change in order to be professional? Or which is important, our own identity or being professional? Thank you, Samadha Miss and thank you, Rekha Miss, for the question. Uh, see, uh, I think some of you might have had this question in your mind when I spoke about attire and style. Definitely, we all have our own identity, our own personal style, our own choices of clothing, jewellery, etc. So I didn't mean that in order to be professional, all of a sudden you have to, you know, 
go through a sudden change, you go shop all the new clothes, buy new ornaments. No, I did not mean that. Instead, from you know, when you open the door of your wardrobe, choose uh, the formal wear which you are comfortable wearing. Okay, your comfortability matters. You don't have to change your personality, you don't have to change your identity, you have to just mold yourself in order to be presentable. That's it. Thank you. One more question, ma'am, from Rasak, sir. If we follow the professionalism uh, um, in our working field, that there are some persons are compelled to leave the place. So how can we overcome? I hope Rasak, sir, question I didn't visit. You please answer. I did not get the question. If sorry. we follow professionalism in our working field, but yes. at the same time, some are compelled to leave the field. So how can we overcome such feelings and thoughts? Um, okay, thank you. Uh, Rasak sir, I think uh, you misunderstood what I tried to explain. I'm sorry for that. Uh, leaving the job, I did not get. See, being professional, again, I think it is somewhat similar to Rega ma'am's question. Being professional does not mean that you have to choose a different path you have that you have never experienced. It is a part of our, you know, job. It is a part of our method. It is a part of our style. And, uh, Rasak said there is one more option. Uh, at the end of the day, if you find it very difficult, if, at the end of the day, if you feel that I can't, you know, follow all these norms, um, have your own method. Or have you, uh, since teachers, the ultimate dedication that we have to apply is in the dealings with our students. So that goal has to be accomplished. And if the institution is that much specific, let them, you know, uh, terminate to you. You will better, you will find a better place where you can be yourself. Okay. If we follow the professionalism, there is some losses for that, that man. Or how we can overcome that losses? If we follow the professional in the classroom, there is a time losses. The, that leads to the uh, incomplete of the syllabus and uh, other things. How we can overcome that one? Uh, okay, see I have shown four areas and based on those four areas, some points were given. But I don't personally feel that any of these points will take you your time from the class. It has no connection with completion of portion. Completion of portion is simply wearing the dress or your makeup, your jewelry, everything is done from home. It has nothing to do from the classroom, right? Your communication definitely it is a part of your teaching uh, method. So that has to be in English. Again, that does not take any time from your uh, time to complete the portion. Then uh, your dealings with colleagues, your personality, your personal characteristics, everything is you know, I don't think that will take you your time from completing portion, time for completing portion. And at the end of the day, completing portion is irrelevant when it is compared to the character building of our students. Okay, that's excellent. Uh, thank you, Ravya Miss. Thank you, Sabra Miss. I think uh, that uh, getting updated according or getting updated according to the strategy, uh, strategies, new new strategies of learning, teaching learning process, and getting planned and systematic and meticulous according to the new new strategies is also a greater challenge. But still, we have to adopt it. And if we are systematic and meticulous, of course, uh, such challenges won't happen. That is what I personally believe. Anyway, uh, from the presentation, it's clear that have a self-analysis, have a self-introspection uh, on ourselves. How how are we? Where do we stand? Yesterday, as we prepare the plan. How, where do we stand? How far we have to improve? When I when we ask for our students to be punctual, to be responsible, to be sincere, how far we are sincere, how far we are punctual and sincere, we should have a self-introspection. So never uh, feel uh, bad to be accountable for your results and take the ownership of your mistakes. Let the students observe you. Let the students observe you teachers and just let them keep you as models and facilitators for their real life situations. Anyway, thank you for your presentation. Now I would like to welcome Mrs. Surudi for the presentation.
continuation of the topic, integration of values. Thank you, ma'am. Respected principal, vice principal, co-panelists, and my dear colleagues. Happy morning to one and all present here. I am Smriti, here with my topic, integration of values. First of all, I would like to remind you that a word, value. What do you mean by value? We know values are the standards that helps an individual to, to choose between right and wrong or good and bad. This understanding is necessary to make an honest, credible, fair decisions, fair relations in daily life. Why teach moral values in the children? Do you think about it? Yes. Makes the child distinguish between right and wrong or good and bad. It can eventually promote rational thinking and unbiased judgment. Boosts their self-confidence and help them to stay positive even in difficult situations also. Then builds positive character in the traits of kindness, respect and humility also. We know some values children must learn. Gratitude, empathy, equality, compassion, cooperation, honesty and sharing. Yes, these are the values must children learn. But in the present scenario, our main problem is, that means main question is, how to inculcate these values in our children? It's very relevant question, I think so. So, it's very simple also. Only two methods are here, direct method and indirect method. In the direct method, acknowledge good behavior, help them practice their learning, intelligent use of media, communicate effectively and clearly, share moral experiences and teachers should be a role model. Yes, that is the pivotal role in this topic. Teacher is a role model. We know we are the teachers. Yes, definitely. We are the role models of our students. I think sometimes our actions can be more than our words. Here are some tips to how to inculcate these values in our children. We can maintain a case study register to closely observe the students and note down their positive and negative traits of their personality. After a month, we can give a reward who has more positive traits of the personality then just like in reinforcement, I think it will help to their moral thinking also. Then how uh, we teach, uh, we are the teachers, teachers can spend at least 5 minutes on moral thinking. We can tell moral stories for the lower class students and then we can show some moral videos for the higher class students. Sometimes vision is better than listen. That's why this idea is better for our world. The next one is indirect method. Indirect method, assembly, celebration days of the national importance and celebrating festivals. We know every student's day starts with an assembly. Thought of the day will be done. At that time, it helps to foster the thinking of more. Then, National and religious festivals must be celebrated to foster the feeling of homogeneity also. The next one is blood donation camp. We can conduct some blood donation camp in our school. Through this conduction of the blood donation camp, it will help to the feeling of kindness and empathy and also the compassion. The last one is community service. Through this community service and we can share our sharing capacity and also the uh, kindness, then empathy, everything. And then we can go to or uh, visit some places of the retirement homes and then orphanage, etc. While we visiting such places and our students can get more ideas on how to, how to mingle them. And also we can 
create our whole story feeling of feeling of and empathy and compassion etc now i would like to remind the court that swami vivekananda says that character is nothing but the habits are coming from coming through the repeated acts yes it is it comes through the past past impressions i conclude my topic with a famous quote away away and not stop not till the goal is achieved yes we are the teachers change is inevitable so we can change for the new education world thank you thank you thank you so much for such an energetic presentation i hope you might have heard a quote that values are taught and not taught do you agree ma'am i uh, yes definitely uh, Can you please explain i agree with this statement because the values of the behaviors are learned from the people who practice them it's not being taught that means students can learn values uh, from what the teachers can rather than what they see okay so we should be there accordingly right that yes. is what you okay thank you thank you so much so to add more points i would like to welcome mrs jisha for the same i would like to apologize for the inconvenience that i have caused for not inviting you she is the she is the hod of the computer science department i would like to welcome her for the presentation thank you shruti and a very warm good morning to one and all the purpose of education is to create a good human being and as shruti said we do have a very important role today in my session i would like to share a few strategies with you which can be implemented in our classrooms to add values in our students the first strategy is value education value education should be taught to all the students moral stories and real life experiences have to be shared not only that activities which are team based have to be organized in the classrooms which will help our students to learn the importance of those values second one as spirituality we should promote our students to meditate pray as well as to attend yoga classes this will help them to relieve stress and help them to face any obstacles in their academic life so in order to implement this we have to start providing yoga classes to all the students in our school not only that we have to make them practice your practice meditation at least for 5 minutes twice a day uh, it gives a positive energy and it is a very good way to start a class third one as sports and games as we know a soul mind soul body has a soul mind sports and games do teach us a series of values which will help us to improve our personal life we should motivate our students to participate actively in sports and games and can somebody tell me what can be done can anybody tell me what can be done in our school to improve sports and games anybody what about arranging summer camps what about arranging sports camps what about promoting our students to use our fitness center how many of our students are aware of it teachers too and not only that see we should bring a concept of fitness festival into our school where all parents teachers and students all together can celebrate many schools have implemented the concept of wellness dance in their assembly that also can be implemented in our school and not only that you can uh, make your students participate in national and international competitions so that they get exposed to other culture next is arts and sports uh, arts art forms students who study different forms of art are seen to be more focused and self disciplined not only that they are exposed to 
uh, they, they are exposed such that they can connect to other people outside the boundaries. So we should think about starting a school of arts where our students can study all the different forms of arts at the same time they get themselves trained to perform in different competitions. Next one is uh, we have to learn to celebrate all the events and festivals in our school campus. Celebration brings children together. It helps them to develop a self-respect and also gives them an opportunity to understand the culture and tradition of each other. Classroom bulletin boards can be used, you can be utilized in order to display all the national events so that they are aware of what is happening around. Next is club activities. Club activities has a very important role in imparting values to our students. New clubs like cookery club, photography club can be introduced in our school. Club activities helps the students to develop social skill. They, it also helps the students to work in a team and uh, achieve a shared goal. Documentaries can be prepared as a part of club activity which will enhance their creative skill and which also will be helping them to see life in a different perspective. Gamification can be introduced as a teaching strategy. Counseling hubs, which can act as an emotional first aid, can be set up in our school campus. Counseling sessions can be regularly given to the students so that they get self-motivated. We should always provide a space for our students to practice the values. And we should also learn to appreciate those, appreciate and reward those students who have good values. These are all facts that we are familiar with and which we have been implementing in our schools. But at the same time, there is always a room for improvement. Always remember, early practice makes a permanent change in our students. As we grow, we act according to the way that we have been taught up. As we have a clear vision in our mind, let us work together right from the beginning to make our students understand what they are is more important than what they have. Thank you. Thank you, Dishan. It's very complex presentation. Uh, I would like to ask you a question that even if we ask, uh, assign some classes, uh, PTPs, even if we ask the students to go out and play also, we can see that some students stay back. Uh, what can we do for such students? Do you have any tips? Thank you, Sir Dhanus. This is something that we normally see in our classrooms. First, uh, we should ask them to choose the sports they like. Maybe they are not interested in playing basketball or football or whatever. No, 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 no. So first we should make them, we should allow them to choose the sports that like, that they like. Second, see we should motivate the students by taking them to watch others play. At times when they come and request us, uh, we, we simply ignore it. Uh, we don't allow them to go out and play or we don't allow them to watch others play. So that is the second thing that I would like to say. And the third thing is, if the student is not ready to play, why don't we go and play with them? And it is one of the best motivations that you can give a student. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Miss. Thank you, Jishamas and Smoothiness for the presentation. Of course, it's clear from the presentation that value education is not a separate subject. Of course, uh, values should be inculcated from all the subject teachers too. We must include such sessions in our teaching learning process. And of course now I would like to remind a few words of uh, our APJ Abdul Kalam that science and spirituality should go hand in hand. Education and spirituality should go hand in hand so that it, will, it may lead to the all-round development of the student. Of course a holistic development of the student. So socially, 
emotionally, uh, physically, uh, intellectually, and of course spiritually, they should be strengthened. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Now I would like to welcome uh, Mrs. Amal for the presentation of the topic, Flip the Classroom. Assalamu alaikum and warm good morning to Anandor. My name is Amal, uh, Department of Social Science. Definitely, we are the teachers of the backbone of our schooling system. And we are engaged with the students directly and delivers the school's, school's vision, mission and curriculum. We are the teachers of the uh, 21st century. Then we must learn and upgrade technically and academically. And our classroom also we have our two techniques. Here I am presenting the topic is with the classroom. What do you mean by a fifth classroom? Fifth classroom is a reverse of the traditional method and it is an instructional strategy. And the teachers provide uh, short video lectures and viewed by the students at their home before the class time, while the class time students increase their engagement to dedicate uh, exercises, problem solving, discussions, etc. So it will be increase the problem solving, the student-teacher relationship, huge relationship increased. Next I explain that the pros and cons of the flipped classroom. It is mainly focused on the student-centered learning and also collaborative learning. We already yesterday's classes we get ideas about from that. Then the lessons and contents are more accessible and easy by the uh, collaborative and students and their learning. And also in our classroom, we know that 30 or 32 students in our classroom, different learning styles are there, different students have that. Then visual learners and uh, auditory learners and kinesthetic learners are there. Then these learning styles are, we can apply easily to this fifth classroom, I think. Then another one is the cons also there in the fifth classroom. Exacerbate the digital divide. It is that we suffered a lot that the last two pandemic years. Then we get the idea about that what are the negative approaches and the social abusing. And then the parents also not affordable easily because two or three children in their home, it is not easily affordable because it is expensive. Then mental health and uh, stress and strain is also another problem of the flipped classroom. Then the obesity, uh, laziness, irregular activities in their daily life, irregular routine, inactive in their academic schools. Then increase the screen time is the another problem. We know that the videos replaced by the people and the places. So the students are easily uh, move to the, the, there is a chance to lack of uh, mingling with others and the habit of isolation. So communication gap between the family members also. Then uh, it relies that the preparation and trust, lack of preparation and trust. Teachers uh, mainly depend in the fifth classroom to the students. So she gave some uh, uh, words on the classroom. The t uh, students are not obey or uh, uh, Obey or interest in that the fifth classroom, there is a chance to lag in the portions and not submit the work on time. The next one is either so many barriers and challenges are the, the flipped classroom here. The lack of students' discipline, the main problem we are uh, affected in, in our days. Then the traditional technology uh, replaced by the teacher's control because Teachers are the main role to control the students, uh, their academics and non-academics, but replaced by the videos. Then there are so many dangerous problems we are faced the last years. The technical issues like that uh, range problem, climate problem. It is not easy to that, uh, especially the lower class of students. Then the decreased human element is the another problem. Teachers are so many creative and caliber teachers are in our school or any other teachers. The professional teachers, they are able to lecture. So, uh, they have the problem that their caliber are uh, replaced by the videos and technical uh, gadgets. 
the next one is i uh, students may neglect the students may uh, uh, technical problems also the and also the students ne neglect their exercises and physical and lack of interest then in internet interest accessibility fluctuations so parents are not easy to uh, stick on that the online facilities are there more always because uh, already they know that the problems or dangerous issues in that last years so uh, uh, there are so many barriers and challenges also the we have the solution that uh, we can stick on the online facilities in our school in the classroom in the offline uh, atmosphere and also then the school provide we provide the net facilities uh, wifi modem and all the smart tv and the facilities in all classes it is not easy to uh, it is very expensive but gradually step by step it will be happen uh, our parents also satisfied much and uh, uh, upgrade the teachers by the help of expert it teachers also so despite of that i conclude my the words but anyway the classroom is effective and students get more uh, space and time to increase their experience and explore and creative thinking that's enough thank you thanks a lot thank you amrita since it is a new approach or a strategy for at least a few can you give a little more clarity on the flipped classroom activities yes yes ma'am thank you sir ma'am uh, then uh, flipped classroom is so many techniques and tools that we can apply in the classroom uh, yes uh, uh, experiential learning and uh, uh, thing uh, peer share learning and also uh, we whole class uh, included the discussions debates and everything then also it is a new techniques other than in flip and fox flip are the new innovations in the flip classroom okay we will we will get updated soon thank you thank you so much amar miss anyway uh, our next panelist is mrs swati uh, to give more to add more points i would like to welcome her for this evening thank you savita miss and thank you amal miss great teachers inspire and motivate us we always remember in our minds isn't it yes or no yes yes now all of you think pair and share who is your great teacher now it's sir those are sitting near to you you can speak to them who is the great teacher fast think pair and share now it's sir because all of you you are bored listening to many many uh, topics so fast okay all of you please uh, you can share think pair and share according to you who is a great teacher why you are remembering that teacher now still now i think we can answer good morning uh, my first standard teacher always i am remembering my first standard teacher because of love and care thank you thank you deepa miss now let me ask the vice principal according to you ma'am whom you remember still i share my or more to share with me my teacher is my 10th standard math teacher come class teacher uh, mrs reena she was uh, so loving and caring she added humor to each one math concept in each classroom okay and what sir has sir uh, shared with uh, miss shobha his english teacher why what is what is the reason still he remembers what is the reason why he gave that name only a few teachers we so remember in our minds right why is it so why you didn't ask you should ask see a teacher mrs shopa she taught me english the way i learned the way you learned sir then what is the reason why you are not remembering other teachers <laughs> they taught me but not the way i learned yes that is very important teaching is very important right what we teach what we teach how we teach that is very very important 
So some of the teaching methods or teaching strategies what we are taking in our classroom is very very important. Right. What Sir has said means the teaching strategies we have to remember in our mind and we have to teach our children the right way and also the tools and techniques what we are using in our classroom that should be the best and the children we will remember as forever. So these are the list of teaching methods. Okay. First one is teacher centered. Okay. That is what we call traditional method. My teachers they taught me in a traditional way. Now uh, if I am teaching in a traditional way what happens? The next moment sir will send me out of the classroom. If I am taking always. I can take traditional method when I require. But not always. Right. Because why? In this 21st century we are focusing on what next one? What is the next one? Student centered. Yes or no? Yes. yes. Student centered. And also project based learning, inquiry based learning, experiential learning, and also blended classroom and flipped classroom. These are the teaching methods or teaching strategies we have to adopt in our classroom. And at the end of this session, sir, so I will ask you the first one who is sitting in the blue class. Blue color, I will ask, what is the best method of teaching? Salim sir, question, question to you. Because uh, my student was not listening to me. So I will ask you at the end of this session, what is the best method of teaching? Okay. So all these students, they have to listen to the teachers. Okay. What they are explaining, how they are explaining and uh, what is the uh, strategies they are adopting in their classroom. Right. Now the technolo technology has advanced, so what we have to do? We have to follow flip classroom or what are the other methods? Yes. Project based learning, experiential learning, blended classroom or blended learning or flip classroom, right? Yes. So what is the difference between blended learning and flip learning? Blended classroom, so you know that also you have experienced that and we are doing now also what I am taking is blended learning with the technology with the screen or smart board I am taking blended learning right I am showing and I am explaining to you that is what we call blended learning and what is the difference between blended learning and flipped learning you can see on the board students first study the course material typically through online lectures then they come to the class and after that what they will do? They will do the task given by the teachers. Okay. That is the difference between blended learning. That means all the instructions they used to get beforehand. They used to get beforehand and they used to do researches and also they used to compare with various te technologies also various teachers also. If they are not happy to be happy with my what we call learning, what they will do, they will search or they will, uh, what, uh, what I want to tell you is that they used to do research also based on the topic and they will come to the class with well prepared and the teachers they used to set, they used to set learning activities, they used to set learning activities, they used to conduct assessment, they used to ask questions. And what happens inside the classroom? Learning happens. Is it clear? Yes or no? Difference between blended classroom and also flipped learning or blended learning. Yes or no? Hope so. Yes. And what are the benefits okay, for students and for teachers of a flipped classroom? Okay. First, students learn at varying speeds. Right. In our classroom, we can see different types of students. Yes or no, sir? Yes, yes. Some are um, fast learners, some are slow learners, some are used to learn in between, okay? So what happened? Their speed depends upon their ability. So flip classroom, what happened? According to their time, they can learn. That is the benefit. According to their time, they can learn. So the teachers, they prepare the topic well and grads and they used to send through videos. Whenever required, what happens? They used to look into and they will learn. Next one is students are provided opportunities for review. And 
if my content is not uh, updated or not according to the contest, what happened? Okay, they can check other videos also. They can visit other website also, and they can learn. Next, materials are ready and prepared for students who are absent or sick. Those who are absent or sick, what happens in our class? Yes. They miss the class, right? Yes, they miss the class. But here in the fifth class, it won't happen. Because we are uploading the videos and they are learning. And whenever required, they can revise it. Okay. Next. Students do not struggle with completing homework also. Because all the homeworks, we are making them to do in our classroom. Next one, students take ownership of the learning. If they know the topic, what happens? Okay, they will learn very fast. Okay, and they will get confidence to take the classes also, right? Yes, because they know the topic beforehand. In traditional classroom means they are not getting the topic beforehand, and some students they won't ask the teachers because they fear teachers. Okay, that is the reason. Next, students are actively working with the peers. Okay, they are actively because we are giving group tasks, so they are actively participating in all the group tasks given by the teacher. For teachers, then teachers, they can spend time more with the students in the flipped classroom. Next one, teachers are involved with student learning because they are giving different, different tasks according to their capabilities. So what happened? Uh, we are getting time to move and to check what's happening in the class. Teachers are able to provide one and one and small group assistance also. It is according to the teacher. If you want to give individual tasks in the classroom, we can give. If you want to give group first, what we have to do, we can give. It is up to us. And we can go through and we can recheck it and also again if you want, we can modify it. Teachers can transform the classes into more creative and engaging ones also. Because we are preparing the uh, classes thoroughly, so we can, according to that, according to the level of learners, we can modify our lesson plan. Next one, teacher focuses on being the guide. Okay, there we are facilitators, right? And also not say, not wise person in front of the students. And content can be re reused also. Because in the next year, if you are taking the same way or same section, you can reuse the content. Yes, yesterday sir has given us a task. What is the task given? Bloom's taxonomy, right? Is it correct? Yes, check all of you. Is it correct? What is the difference what you are noticing here? Yes, it's upside down, right? Inverted classroom. Another name for this, okay, for this, what we call flip classroom is inverted classroom, okay? So you can see here, okay, remembering, understanding, applying, analyzing, evaluating, and creating, right? Creativity. That the first two, it happens in before the class. Okay? It happens before the class because the students are getting their material through videos, PowerPoint presentations, whatever it is. They are learning before the class. So remembering and understanding and applying also they are doing in their homes, okay, in their own space. Next one, during the class, we teachers, we can apply and we can analyze. The students are getting more opportunities to apply and to analyze. And the third one, post class, okay, we are evaluating and creating. And also inside the class, if we get also, we can do these, okay. All the last three what we call analyzing, evaluating and creating. This is the difference between traditional classroom and also what we call flipped classroom. How we have to take during 45 minutes of class. Okay, And uh, here we are getting that okay, presentation of new content 20 minutes. Okay? We are taking for presenting a content 20 minutes. right? But whereas guided and independent practice activities more time is giving their flipped classroom. That is the, uh, what we call it as benefit or beneficial for the students. Yes, in this model you can 
see flip again divided into different symbolizes into different subscales okay first one flexible environment that means you have to create a proper atmosphere for the students and also you have to check whether the students are getting flexible environment and the next one is l L stands for learner centered approach or learning culture happens. Third one is uh, intentional content and fourth one is professional educators and uh, next one is progressive networking learning activities and uh, engaging and effective learning experiences and the last one is diversified and seamless learning platforms. How to implement a flipped classroom in your class? This you have to do. First you have to plan and then you have to record, then you have to share, then you have to group. Again, if you think that is not beneficial, what you have to do is that you have to change. And the last one is again you have to regroup according to your module. Yes, these are the 21st century skills what we are getting inside our flip classroom. All the 21st, almost all the 21st century skills we are getting in our flip classroom. So that is first active learning happens. Next problem solving or what we call reasoning happens, critical thinking, communication through verbal or non-verbal and the last one is collaborative peer work. Let me wind up with one quote, tell me I forget, teach me I remember, involve me I learn. Thank you. Thank you Shadhanis for such an involved presentation. Uh, still I have a question for you, can you give me uh, more clarifications on the difference between the flipped classroom and flipped learning. Flipped learning means what we call it as collaboration of online and also in class group learning. And uh, uh, means flip, another, what we call flipped classroom is that where the students, all the materials, course materials and all the things they will learn beforehand. And with that knowledge they will come to the class and they will do the tasks and activities given by the teacher. Thank you Swadhimis, thank you so much, thank you panelists. I think in spite of all the disadvantages that is noted, I think that uh, the complaint regarding the burden of the portions, completion of the portions can be solved through this flipped approach, flipped teacher approach and flipped uh, classroom approach I think. Anyway, I would like to conclude the topics that we have already read. I hope you all get involved in the uh, discussion and I hope that will of course help you to improve the ambience of our school and for bringing a quality development in our institution. Anyway, before conclude, I would like to remind you that uh, we can see that uh, each and every institution in and around struggles for a child to get admitted in their years. And at the same time, simultaneously, we can see a long queue before our campus, a long queue of parents to get the admission forms to get admitted in our schools. So, of course, we are blessed to be one of the staff in Ansar English School. Of course, it's a fact. So, we teachers are highly responsible for providing the quality development and quality education for our students. It's our responsibility. So, feel proud be, being an Ansari and try to get better for a better Ansari tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you so much for your cooperation. Thank you.